What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. Today, we are counting down numbers 15 through 11 on the top 25 key comics to invest in for under $25. This is the second part in a four-part video series, folks. The way this works is we get lower on the list. These books have gotten hotter and increased in value more and more over the last three years. And today, we're looking at the next five. If you haven't checked out the first installment of this series, that video is up for you guys to count down 25 through 16. Before we get into the books, a couple of things. First off, we are still giving away this beautiful EGS Slab 9.4 Warlock and the Infinity Watch, number one with the Journals Comics custom label. All you need to do to have a chance to win this book for my 10K sub giveaway contest, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell, like this video and comment below letting me know that you are subscribed to the channel. And then, of course, stay tuned towards the end of the video where I will be asking a trivia question for you to answer. And that'll get you a second entry into the drawing. So good luck to everyone. And also wanting to remind everyone that if you are in need of comic book supplies, please check out bcwsupplies.com. You can use the code journos to receive 10% off of your order. This code does not expire and you can use it as many times as you want. So go save yourself some money there. All right, folks, first book on the list today coming in at number 15, we've got Marvel Team Up 103. This is the second full appearance of Taskmaster. Now, like we always do in these video series, we're going to be looking at a current graded value. We're going to compare that to a graded value from three years ago. We're going to be looking at the plus minus differential from those three years. And then we're going to be looking at the average raw. And that average raw is where you're going to find that 25 and under mark for these books. So second full appearance of Taskmaster. I think this book is kind of overlooked now we know the taskmaster did um their thing and the black widow film who knows if they'll show up in the mcu again i'm hopeful but i think this book has potential to grow because taskmaster is just an awesome comic book character without movie hype not everything has to do with movie hype and movie spec folks current cgc 9.8 fair market value sitting at about 250 dollars three years ago was sitting at 136 that right there is a 84% increase in value over the last three years. Now, remember, these fair market values are a moving average. They can change week to week, month to month, all right? Now, look at this average raw, $14. So you could still find this book for a really affordable price out there. And again, not all these books have to do with movie specs. So I don't care if this character never shows up in the MCU again what you guys thought of the character and some of the changes they made. I don't care about that. Taskmaster is an awesome comic book character. That's why I have this one on the list today. All right, next up, coming in at number 14, New Teen Titans, number 10. This is the second full appearance of Destro. It's his third overall appearance, but yes, second full because context matters. I love Destro as a character. I can't believe how affordable this book is current CGC 9.8 fair market value sitting at about $115 next to three years ago, sitting at 56 is all that is a 105% increase in value over the last three years. So it's more than doubled average raw folks, $7. Now remember average raw doesn't pertain to a specific grade. We take it all the data of all the raw books sold, no matter the grade divided by how many sold and that's how you get your average raw. So for a 50 cent Bronze Age book, somewhere around a mid-grade for that $7 mark, really, really solid. Again, I've been saying this a lot lately. DC books. DC books flying under the radar because the MCU is drawing so many eyes to movie spec, Disney Plus spec with everything Marvel. So don't, don't sleep on DC, folks. These books continue to increase in value too, even with how affordable this book still is all right coming in at number 13 we got some star wars action this is return of the jedi number two this is the first appearance of emperor palpatine in comic books of course now this is one now i don't use the term undervalued a lot 
I think, and I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again right now, folks. So bear with me here if you heard it before. Undervalued, that term is used way too loosely and out of context by collectors, hobbyists, and content creators. But I believe this book is undervalued. I believe it's undervalued because I don't think for a long time a lot of people have understood that this is the first comic book appearance of Emperor Palpatine. So I think the more people learn about that, the more it could affect this book. Now, keep in mind, Star Wars books have been solid on the market over the last few years, you know, starting with The Mandalorian and getting the fandom back into it. So that's another factor of why Star Wars books are really trending upward. But let's look at these numbers. Current CGC, 9.6 fair market value, sitting at $101. Next to three years ago, we're sitting at about 46 That right there is 100 in. 20% increase in value with the average draw of $13 in just a, a real awesome cover as well. So I'm all for Star I'm a huge Star Wars fan for those that don't know. So I love seeing these books on this list to where you could get a nice key comic book with a key first appearance for a really affordable value. All right, two more books on today's list, folks. Coming in at number 12, we got some Punisher. This is the Punisher Annual number two. This is the first meeting, Punisher versus Moon Knight. Now, this book has gotten some hype around it as of late. Why? Well, <laughs> Moon Knight, there's that. We got the Moon Knight show coming. But also, I think there's speculation that John Berthold could show back up in, in MCU canon, and maybe be seen facing off with Moon Knight or something like that. I mean, we saw Charlie Cox come back. We saw Vincent D'Onofrio come back as Kingpin. I think John is coming back. He has to. He has to. He has to. We also know that uh, Deadpool, Deadpool will be streaming on Disney Plus. So, hmm, lots of things to ponder for the future. Let's look at these numbers. Current CGC 9.8 fair market value sitting at $330 next to three years ago where we're sitting at about $135. That right there is a 144% increase in value. These percentages are getting higher and higher. You guys see this? With an average raw of $14. So still, very affordable book. That increase, like I said though, in those graded books, I do believe has to do with the, with the things that I just said. So for me, folks, and again, say this in all these videos, I'm not here to tell you guys what to buy or what not to buy. I am here to give you my personal opinion with some data and some facts, and you guys have to make your own decision. If you aren't willing to take risks in some of these books, although a lot of these are more low risk, especially raw, because they're affordable, right? But if you don't have love for the characters, you're not willing to take the risk, maybe they're not for you, okay? At the end of the day, we got to love what we're doing in this hobby, right? Personally, for something like this, I would stay away from the 9.8s. I would not pay $330 for a 9.8 of this book. I would go after some high-grade Ross, maybe buy a few, and maybe send a couple to CGC, CBCS, CGS, who knows, whatever, and hope that one of those books comes back a 9.8. If you wanted to maybe flip something, get some money back in your pocket, something like that, right? That's just me, though. That's just me, folks. Y'all can do whatever you want to do, right? All right, everyone, we have one more book, one more book on the list today. But before we get into that book, I want to take less than 60 seconds to talk about today's sponsor, PopCultureZone.com. PopCultureZone.com is an online shop focusing on hot new comics, including exclusive and incentive variants, CGC graded comics, and tons of other inventory, including pop culture toys and other collectibles, all at low and competitive prices. PopCultureZone.com ships all over the U.S. And if you are buying raw comics, they offer flat rate shipping of only $4.99. That's right, $4.99. Absolute craziness, right? And there's no taxes included, excluding New Jersey. PopCultureZone is also on eBay, where they hold a 100% positive feedback rating with over 8,000 completed transactions for this year alone. Make sure to check out the link to their website below as well as their eBay link. So be sure to give them a follow there as well. All right, again, big thank you to popculturezone.com. Check out the links below, folks. Here we go. Last book on today's video. This is 
Book number 11 on the list, we got Uncanny X-Men number 282. First cameo and cover appearance of Bishop. I love Bishop. Big reason about why I love Bishop was because of the X-Men animated uh, series in the 90s, of course. Now, uh, I, I think there's a lot of potential for Bishop in the MCU, but I just love the character as well. And I think, again, not all of the value that we find in comic books has to do with MCU spec. I think this book can definitely continue to increase in value for that long term. But take heed, and I'm going to tell you why. But let's look at the numbers first. Current CGC 9.8 fair market value sitting at about $278 next to three years ago, where it was sitting at about $110. That right there is 153% increase with an average raw sitting at about $20. So for an early 90s book, you could probably find a decent higher grade for about that $20 mark. Here's what I don't encourage you all to do. Again, don't go paying extreme amount of money for 9.8 of this book just because you saw it in my video. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm saying this for a reason because of just other things that have happened with, you know, things being talked about and our reactionary behavior or our FOMO or whatever we want to call it. And then we, we may look at the census and, oh, there's just a small amount of 9.8s on the census. Census. I need to go grab one because they're rare and scarce and I'm going to pay $500. No, that's, that's not the case. It's just because not a lot of people were, you know, sending that book in to get graded, hoping to get a 9.8 because it wasn't that valuable to begin with. So, well, I do believe that this is a great low risk investment because you could find a raw copy for still under that $25 mark. I, I just, again, I don't encourage you guys to break your bank and spend hundreds of dollars on a high grade CGC copy. I mean, if you want to do that, it's perfectly fine, and I can't tell you yes or no to make those decisions. But, hey, the ball's in your court, <laughs> right? It's going to be on you. For me, I just think that, again, you, you got to love the character. you got to find some type of love in the comic itself. But you also got to understand that these types of comic books from the early 90s do have long-term potential at this point. I mean, they are essentially, you know, these are copper age books. They're not modern books and they are going to continue to age out and that's going to, you know, drive the demand up over time. And you're going to see these increase and increase, increase long-term, but it doesn't mean that there are going to be worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And, you know, you're, you're playing the, the game of risk really diving into these 9.8s, especially with the 9.8 market where it's at right now post-COVID because it's going crazy still, still to this day right now. So just take heed and be careful. But if you could find a nice high-grade raw for under that $25 mark, I think it's a decent buy. That's the video for today, folks. But before we go, we got a couple of things to do. But I want to know what books that you have on this list what you might be hunting for, and let me know if there's any other books that you would have liked to see on this list. But remember, we still got 10 more books to count down. Before we go, I do have a trivia question. But before we get to the question, as always, I got to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much again, again and again, for all the support that you give month after month. If anybody is interested in signing up to become a Patreon for only $3.99 a month, that link is below in the description. And of course, if you want to support the channel via YouTube membership, that's only $1.99 a month. And I want to thank everyone for the continued support there too. Uh, big shout out to uh, this month's new YouTube member, Jack B. Great member of this community. So thank you guys so much as well. Now, today's trivia question. Are we ready for this, folks? Okay. This is a Journos Comics trivia question. I have close to 20,000 or maybe even more. I just haven't put them all on my CLZ app. 20,000 books in my comic book collection. Do I have more Marvel or DC Comics? What do I have more of, Marvel or DC Comics? That's the trivia question for today, folks, for you guys to get an extra entry into winning that awesome EGS 
Warlock and the Infinity Watch number one. Thank you all so much for watching again. Subscribe to the channel. Comment below. Be well. And until next time.